when men and women interact, and this is what the experts find, is that the primary need that they find for a man is to feel respected, okay? And the primary need for a woman is to feel cared for or loved. And so what these experts have found is that the conflict that happens between men and women can basically be broken down into this this formula, which is which they call the crazy cycle. And what that crazy cycle is, is that, and this is again, this is interactions between men and women on any level. So whether it's in the context of marriage, or it's in the context of Islamic work, or the context of within a family, whatever. But generally, this is what happens. And the crazy cycle is, this is the conflict, when conflict happens, it usually can be broken down to this, that one of them, so for example, a man might do something, or a brother, might do something that is interpreted by the sister or the woman in whatever context as being uncaring. So he does something that, that feels like it's kind of insensitive, okay? Now what does a woman do in response? Well, our knee-jerk reaction also happens to be the absolute worst reaction. Our knee-jerk reaction is to react with attitude. Right? It's to react kind of in an aggressive sort of, um, you know, almost like disrespectful way. Okay? And that, the root of that though is that we feel uncared for or we feel unloved or we feel that someone has done something insensitive to us. So we react with harshness. Okay? Now what does that do? Well now when you're reacting with disrespect, you're now depriving the man of his primary need which is to feel respected. And so how does he react? He reacts by being even more unloving and even more uncaring and even more harsh. And so now you are in this crazy cycle because when now when a woman feels that, she reacts with even more disrespect. So the question is how do we break this cycle? And what they say is that there's something called unconditional respect and unconditional love or care or, or care or consideration, depending on the context, of course. So what does that mean in terms of Islamic work? What does that mean in terms of a marriage or a relationship? Well, what it means is that regardless of whether or not we feel that someone is being insensitive, if we respond, especially when dealing with a man, if a woman responds with unconditional respect, meaning that she remains respectful, that that will actually trigger a man to be more caring and more loving. And this is really interesting because if you look at the advice that the Prophet ﷺ gives, it is exactly follows this formula. So obviously the Prophet ﷺ is going to give us the advice that is most helpful, right, to have a successful relationship. So when Allah, when, when the Prophet, Allah and His Prophet command the women or, or advise the women, most of the advice that's given to women is not to love men, is not to love their husbands. Why do you think that is? Well because women Love comes naturally, right? We, we give love, this is something that we naturally, and we are, very, um, we are very familiar with the concept of unconditional love. However, there's something we're not that familiar with, and that is respect. We do not understand the concept of unconditional respect. We as women feel like, well, you gotta, re you gotta deserve my respect, you gotta earn my respect, right? So if you're treating me bad, I'm not gonna respect you, right? Now that's the problem right there, because when we take on that attitude, we're only going to get more and more harsh treatment. It's like, it's like this knee-jerk reaction. So the Prophet ﷺ comes to women and he recommends to women what? Respect your, your, your husbands, right? Obey your husbands. So the, the, the emphasis is on respect, okay? Now, when Allah and His Messenger talk to men, when the Prophet ﷺ is advising men on how to treat women, what is the emphasis? The emphasis is in, in terms of kindness and love. So the Prophet them is telling men, be kind with your wives, right? Be caring, be, be, uh, don't be harsh with your wives. And in one hadith, the Prophet them says that a woman was created from a bent rib, right? And he says, and this is a really deep hadith, he says that if you try to straighten it, you'll break it. But if you leave it as it is, you'll enjoy it. So what does that mean? Well, women 
are a certain way and they're created that way, right? We didn't bend our own rib, that we didn't make the rib bent ourselves. But we're created with a certain nature from God. And if you're gonna go and try to change that nature, guess what? You're gonna break it. You're not gonna be successful with that woman. But if you accept her as she is, accept her as she is and accept her nature as it is, you will be successful. And so the idea here is that if you treat her with kindness and you treat her with love and that unconditional love commandment is more given to men because men on the other hand have the idea usually on you know the mirror of the women is that I'm only going to be kind and loving to my wife when she's respectful to me but so long as she shows me disrespect I'm not going to show her love and this is also a formula for failure because the more that a man shows harshness to a woman, the more disrespectful she tends to be. Now one really beautiful example of this is the example of Omar radiallahu anh. Now when you think about in your mind who is the most manly man there is that you can like just think about, you know like big masculine man, you think of usually Omar ibn al-Khattab, you, you know, this is one of the most manly men, you know, you can think of, right? Now, if you think about, now, this is the man who this, this story um, stars, okay? So what happened is then when Omar ibn al was Khalifa, there was one of the men in the society who wanted to come to him to complain about his wife. Now, like, I guess the women of Ansar were kind of like strong, right? So um, he was going to go complain about his wife and then when he got close to Umar radiallahu anh's house, he heard um, Umar's wife like raising her voice to him and he kind of turned around to go back. And Umar radiallahu anh came out and said, you know, you know, asked him why he came and he said, well, actually I was coming to complain about the same problem that you have. So Omar radiallahu at that time told him something very wise and he said that my wife, you know, she cooks for me, she cleans for me, she takes care of me, you know, and she takes care of, you know, my home, right? Can I not overlook it or be tolerant when she's, you know, raising her voice or she's talking in a disrespectful way? Now the point here, there's a really deep lesson here, and that is that Omar Radilan understood that to be a man, I mean, you, again, you, you, you definitely wouldn't call him un, unmasculine, right? That to be a man does not mean that you need to be harsh, right? He understood that the actual strength that the Prophet ﷺ talked about was in controlling your anger, not letting your anger control you. So, you know, if you look at, again, this advice that we can look at from the Prophet ﷺ, from Allah, it, that's where we should be getting our sense of, of self-worth and what it means to be a woman and what it means to be a man. And until we can use that as our standard, rather than society, rather than, you know, popular culture, we're never going to be successful.